Hey, let's talk wiper motors for your first generation Firebird and windshield washer system. Something you hope you never have to use, probably never will, but it'd be kind of cool if it actually worked. I gotta do some doctoring on the wiper motor anyway, so let's go ahead and make that system work. So what are we gonna get into today? Making the wipers work here on the Great Pumpkin. I have a list up here on my board. We only have a handful of things yet to do, and this car will be finished, and one of them is getting this wiper motor operational. And speaking of list of things to do, carpet, console, wiper motor, oil pressure gauge, seats, seat belts and a pillar trim and probably a couple of little small things but when it comes to the wiper motor i've got the original one actually sitting here i just got done bench testing it well we'll call it bench testing I plugged into the car and grounded out the one lug here you have to ground this lug for the wiper to go back to the park position um wiper motor works great this is our washer pump this is the original style washer pump all it is is a little solenoid in here bang shut runs on a cam runs a plunger and that's what makes it operate well this one goes click 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 really loud but it does not do anything out of the washer pumps so we're going to take this apart and discover why i have a pretty good feeling i know what's wrong with it someone had ordered a new washer pump kit from ames um went ahead and bought that got some washer tubes but i'm going to show you under the hood here uh, what we're talking about there's only five wires that actually operate this wiper motor up here on the firewall like I said, one of the most important things, it has to ground out to the firewall. So make sure you got good, clean bolts to actually get this thing to park. If you have a parking issue, you may just have a ground issue on your wiper motor. But it's these five wires right here. These three here go to the wiper motor, like high, low speed, and the thing. there's a constant power of some sort. And then the two here on the two wire plug, this is one in particular I want to check out. The black and yellow, and it has a black and white tracer on the wires. These are the wires that go to the washer pump. It should be a power and a ground when pushing in on the wiper switch to go to the wash function. So if you have voltage here and your wiper motor runs, and like I said, I know I have voltage here because I heard the click, click, click of the solenoid. So that's your wiring and your check there. So we're going to go ahead and tear into the wiper motor and show you what it takes to get the thing doctored up. And all I'm really going to do though, essentially, is just two bolts, one and two. I'm going to pop this thing off right now. Now underneath here, like I said, Really, this is just a diaphragm pump, a little plunger that, that gets activated by a solenoid, and then it runs on a cam. Now, most likely, the cam is broken inside because, well, they're just plastic. But the reason it broke is because something is malfunctioning in the pump. Uh, now, here's the thing, interesting fun fact. Of all the cars I've ever built, I've never bothered to fix the wiper system or the washer system. The wipers, I make work because you may get stuck in the rain. There you go. Pieces are dumping out. These are, that's part of the cam, but... I figured it would be kind of important to see if I can get everything to work in this car. I think it would be kind of fun. Um, but nonetheless, this is the little cam thing I was talking about. It should have four layers or four pieces to it here that actually bump the pump over. But as you can tell, it's in pieces. And it actually would reside here on the back side of the wiper shaft. Straight through with the wiper motor is where that slides onto its keyway so it actually stays indexed. But the reason it typically breaks is, well, here's what it hits against. It bumps against this lever. And that lever is seized up 100%. So what happened was, is this is malfunctioned, rusted, who knows what, and engaged the solenoid, which would kick this arm down, but I have a feeling it just, it blew the, the cam apart because this is seized up. That's why I've got a new one right here. So we'll go ahead and open this thing up and I'll show you what it comes with. And actually, okay. Yeah, okay. And here's our new cam. That's what that thing should look like. And again, um, that this rest on here, this little rubber seal, and this goes on there. So that part will be repaired pretty quickly, just like that. And here's what I was talking about, I want to show you a little closer. This here one bolt, uh, where it mounts the three bolts to the firewall, one, two, three. This is our ground bolt. So make sure this one's really, really good and clean. That way when you put the bolt in, it can it will ground up through the bolt. This is the ground for the motor, and it grounds to the firewall. So make sure that one's good and clean before you put it back together. Might save you some headaches on why your wipers aren't parking. They just shut off when you turn the key off. So at this point, I don't even need to recycle this cover. So this whole thing can go over here. The only thing I'm going to use over is two attaching bolts. That's about it. Now this thing here, check this out. I bet you this one moves. Oh, effortlessly. Huge difference between this one. This one is seized. I mean, heck, I can't get both thumbs on this thing and make it operate. Nope. That thing's junk. 100% junk. This one... That's nice, that'll work great. So what I'll do now, I'll go ahead and bolt this onto our motor here, and then we'll go ahead and put it back on the car and see if we get this thing to work. And it should be as simple as just lining it up, put two bolts back in it. 
Now this thing was a little expensive for a working washer, but I think it's like a 60 or $70 part. But I think it's kind of a neat little detail to have everything operational on the car. I even got the horn working on the car. So we're, like I said, we're going through our checklist down to almost nothing left to do with this thing. Really looking forward to a nice long test drive. I got the air conditioning working real nice too. That's a added bonus because here in Indiana, this whole week it's been in the 90s and the humidity's been through the roof. So they, they said the real feel heat's like 110 degrees and uh, I believe that 100%. It's hot. My buddy in Arizona says it's hot out there, 108, but I, I'm beginning to think it may be cooler there than it is here because they got that cool dry heat stuff. So, of course, you'll be watching it, Brian. you let me know all about it, I'm sure. But snug that up. Snug that up. Now, that's ready to go install there in the car. Well, just for grins and giggles, I'm going to pull this cover off here. And you can really see what's going on. This is just a dirty, mad mess. And yeah, that doesn't work. That does oh, look at that. So what's seized up is this mechanism here, but just not worth fixing. You can't really, you can buy some parts for it, but I already got the assembly for 60 bucks. You're ready to mount this thing up, but look at these bolts. They have a special knurled like washer on the backside that helps ensure that these kind of dig into it and ground it so i mean these bolts typically break off when you take it apart but you can get them from ames pretty inexpensively so but they probably spend more on shipping and do the actual bolts but these are the three bolts we will go ahead and mount that thing up on the firewall there all right we're going to go ahead and install this bad boy here into the firewall there's three nozzles here on the washer pump larger ones the inlet and two smaller ones go to the each left or right washer nozzle it doesn't matter which one's which they're both the same this goes through the firewall and of course i've got the cowling already unbolted and removed this fits in here like so put your three bolts in it all right that's the last bolt now plug in the wiring we have a single wire plug that goes right there. This is to operate the motor. A double wire plug. And here's our washer pump right Sure. Now, at this point, now I've got the plumbing to hook up. Like I said, the larger barb is down here. And the thing that kind of blows your mind is they got the master cylinder, brake booster, wiper motor, steering column. Everything's crammed over here. Why didn't they use that side for anything besides a blower motor? And unless I'll go get the plumbing run here and then we'll get the hoses hooked up. This is the new hose that actually ran all the way here to our new reservoir here. I'm probably just gonna put some water in it just for the time being to test the system, but I'll get these hooked up right here next. All right, we got a little hose on down yonder. Now the next thing we're gonna get into before we put all this back together, I need to verify that wipe motor's in park. I'm pretty sure it's where it's at, but quick simple fix. Got the wires all hooked up, the ground wire is good. Reach in, turn the key on and then operate the wiper motor. You should be able to watch that motor spin. I'll turn it on here to low. Okay, there's high. When I turn it off, it'll turn a few more degrees and then it should stop. But here's off. And one a few more degrees. I'll go low, I'll hit off. There you go. So that is definitely the park position. Now we gotta get the wiper crank arm, which is this thing right here on the right direction. We get it wrong, well, it's not gonna go the right way. And I'm fairly certain it goes on the way where it's harder than heck to get the nut on there. So we're gonna try this this way first. Okay, all right. Now I'll go ahead and start the nut a few turns by hand. Then we're gonna turn the wipers on and see how that looks. Thank goodness I'm right-handed in this situation. I got the left hand on the camera and the right hand here on the hardware here. Okay, great. Now, what I'm gonna do to help us visualize, this is gonna simulate our wiper. I'm lying like this, the arrow pointing up. Now when I turn the wipers on, that arrow should point up further than down if I got it right. Up, down, up, down. Well, then we got the direction right. Now I should turn it off. I should keep going. So I park. So I'll start back on. There's off. 
Yep, that is great. So, nonetheless, I think that's gonna work just fine. So I need to secure that nut, then install the cowling here. All right, the cowling goes in next. Now, of course, I would say tape is cheap, paint is not, but be careful in putting this thing in here. There's so much stuff you could run into, but we gotta tuck this thing in. Now the cowling actually has trim clips underneath the uh, window trim that actually slides into it. So you got to push it down and then slide it back into place. So I've got that in place. Now what we'll do, we'll go ahead and there's five or four bolts that fasten here to the uh, firewall. Okay, this here we go. You can see that kind of tucks underneath it. I'm going to get that side there. Kind of slides into place. Now we'll secure it in that down. Got the cowling all put back into place where it belongs. So there's just four attaching bolts here one, two, three, four across. Now, if you look carefully, you'll see here a little black tab. There's one over there, too. That's your wash nozzle. They poke through here right out of the uh, cowl panel there. I don't know if you can get that, I can get the Cohen camera or not, but we're going to try it right there. The only kind of pokes through the grate. So those are plumbed into place. Now I need to do the same thing. Run the little smaller hoses that came with the washer system. And then I'll go from the pump up there to those washer nozzles. As you can see, here's the other end of the nozzle poking through there and poking through there. So all I got to do now is just run it from loop from there to that one over there. Okay, got our plumbing all hooked up now to our washer system. Over here, loops around, plugs into the pump. Same thing with this little nozzle here. Go ahead and put uh, some. I'm just gonna go with just water here in our reservoir. And see that thing will actually pump now. Unfortunately, the thing ever sits out in the winter, this won't work. You can't leave the water in there. We're gonna try this. There's that. Now we'll go in here, turn the key on, and then we push this in. It should make the washer engage. And eventually, something's gonna come out about there. Uh, probably a better way to prime the system besides just holding the button down, maybe, but I guess we'll see. So far, nothing. Oh, hey, look at that. There's one side, and there's the other side. Huh, that works. I've never had one of those that actually works, so. Not the most beautiful spray pattern, but technically, I guess, I don't know what it's supposed to look like. Again, I've never actually tried to make that work. It's just a small hole drilled in the end of that tube, or whatever, or crimped in the tube, but washer system works. Hey, so there you have it. Working washer system and wipers on a first generation Firebird. Now, the biggest tip I want you to take away from this, let's say the motor works, turns on and off, but doesn't go to park check the ground you may have to pull that grommet apart and clean it. there's sometimes corrosion builds up behind it just the same that's one of the things that probably stress you the most so if you have any parking issue and that's it check the ground i think i said that three times four times hopefully you get the point uh wiper arms i'm gonna put them back on but as you can tell there's no rubber blades on these things and i started checking around they're freaking expensive you can't buy just the refills anymore it seems and if you do find the wiper blades they're 40 bucks each so uh, I don't want to put these on because in case I actually turn the wipers on, I don't want to scratch the beautiful windshield, which is brand new and shiny. So these are the last piece to go on for the wiper system to be operational. And this is actually the first piece I took off the car. I think during this assembly is one of the first things I did in the taking them apart video. If you guys haven't seen that, like I said, this entire car, we've gutted it, went through every system and gone through every nut and bolt, cleaned it up, restored it, and brought it back to like new or better than new condition. And we're just about wrapped up. Uh, I got a little list I showed you at the beginning of the video. I'm gonna start working on some more of those things. So of course, if there's anything I miss, I do apologize. But the good news is I have plenty of other cars to work on. And if there's something you want to see, let me know and I'll make sure I get that in the next video, next garage on the next car, because this will not be the end or the last for the Vinyl Village Garage. I love these cars, having fun putting it back together. This has been kind of a neat journey, but uh, I think I'm ready for another one, right? Hmm, crazy guy. But nonetheless, rambled on enough. Hope this wiper video helps you out or fills in some of the blanks or helps solve some of the problems you may have. So nonetheless, appreciate you following me on the journey of the Great Pumpkin, and we'll see you next time.